Hello and welcome to tonight's Thursday night Bible study. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody that's going to join us this evening. Um, we're going to go through the panel and introduce ourselves first, so we can start from this side. Good evening. My name is Nelly Chavez. My name is Dominique Gomez. And I'm Jordan Aguilar. And I'm J.D. Longoria. I'm here on staff, and I'll be the moderator for tonight, if that's what <laughs> yeah, you want to yeah, call it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, 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 I've been really blessed by the game changing. Our theme this month has been game changer, and I've been really blessed by the preaching and the teaching that we've had so far this month. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about um, is the game changer of the Holy Ghost. Um, but we're going to do a little icebreaker first. Um, and I'd like to ask the panel, um, what's a game changer in your lifetime? Um, it can be anything that, you, that has changed your life or you've seen change in, you know, others, you know, in society, stuff like that. So uh, who wants to go first? I can go first. Um, the game changer in my life probably would have been getting married. And not necessarily getting married in the aspect of, like, wanting to spend the rest of my life with one person. It was more that that person came with baggage, um, which came in the form of two little kids at the time who were four and eight. And so becoming a parent, a step parent. I was a step kid, and I was a terrible step kid. Okay, I can I can say that now. At the time, I was like, I'm a good step. I was a terrible step kid, and I always said I never want to be a step parent. It's too hard. Well, lo and behold, Nick comes in. He's got Destiny and Tito, and at the beginning, man, it was hard, and it was one of those things where every day you're like, Lord, please give me patience. <laughs> and so we know when you pray for patience, <coughs> He does things to test your patience. Mm -hmm. He gives you you know, trials, um, so yes. I yeah. think that I've come a long way, but I also think that I'm still learning. I definitely am not where I was at that time, um, but Nick supports me, and so that would definitely be my game changer is mm -hmm. going from being single and self-independent to married with two kids like that. And I think mm -hmm. that's a game changer for a lot of us marriages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was 28 when I got married, and by the m by all Mexican standards, I was an old maid, <laughs> and I and I w w was supposed to be um, very mature. I, I had my I had a job, I had a brand new car, I was out on my own for quite a few years, and you would have thought, okay, that's this is going to be easy, but it wasn't. I was also a stepmom, and um, it changed it changes your life. Marriage changes your life, but having children changes it even more right, right. so um yeah for the first few years i wanted to jump the ship <laughs> god has been faithful <laughs> yeah that's funny um i'll say mine i mean y'all said marriage I, I totally agree with marriage too like i remember being a single guy and i would just i had like four meals i would cook those like my go-to meals you know and, and then i would cook a bunch of chicken and chicken. and i just i never trusted Stop. myself with seasoning so i just <laughs> ate it I just ate. I just ate just the chicken without salt, without you know. I don't even know what you put on chicken, really. I still don't know what you put on chicken. God for But I remember coming home after work and be like, "There's a meal," and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Like, I don't gotta cook it. I was, I guess, I was just getting you know, you know, stuck in my my by myself and my dog and. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, flavor in food is a game changer. Okay, I think that my, another one is a. Uh, um, Texting. I remember the first time I received a text. I thought I got an email, and uh, <laughs> I was like, "This is this is so like e this is like emails in faster form." And I was like, I was so annoyed with texting. I literally probably took about a year before I wanted to try it. But then uh, after that, yep, changed the game Thank a little you. bit. Yeah, for us shy folks out there, you want to talk on the phone. So <laughs> I, I kind of <laughs> agree with all that. Marriage for sure. I mean, was a big game changer. Then plus having kids, even ha you know that you know, getting used to waking up at all times of the hour <laughs> of sleep when you're used to sleeping in and having the, you know, once they start going to school, hauling around and stuff. And then too, I agree with you, like with the taxi and social media, I remember you used to have to, you know, the older phones, you'd have to hold the letter down, then move it over the arrow over and then. Oh, the T9 yeah, texting? Yeah, the T9 oh, texting. Yeah. And I used to hate that. Man, That's why I was like, yeah. why can't you just call? Yeah. Now it's like, <laughs> if someone calls me, I'm like, man, why aren't you just texting me? <laughs> right, you know? right, right. So, uh, you know, those are big game changers in, you know, in life. So um, for the, you know, once again, the, the month, 
th this month is Game Changer, and our base uh, scripture is out of Galatians 1, 15 through 17. But tonight, you know, we're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost is a game changer in every Christian's life. It, it's a game changer in just humanity alone. So, you know, it impacts our lives as Christians because it's a gift from God. You know, uh, when Jesus was, you know, preparing to leave, you know, the disciples were asking him qu different questions, and he says, you know, he's going to have, you know, send some, a comforter toward you, God will. So the scripture I'm going to be using is uh, out of John uh, 14 and 26. And the scripture says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whosoever I have said unto you. Now, when we talk about the Holy Ghost, we're talking about something that just completely will change you throughout. You know, it, you, know you, you can be a Christian, you know, getting saved, but when, once you receive the Holy Ghost, you become a different person. And it, you know, it definitely changes who you are. So my first question for the panel was, why did God send us the Holy Ghost? You know, sometimes as new Christians or those who are from different faiths don't understand the Holy Ghost. So tonight we're going to explain this game changer that God sent. So uh, who wants to start first? I'll start. Um, I believe that the Holy Ghost is a manifestation of God himself in us. Amen. And Acts 1, 8 says, um, Jesus was speaking and he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So we have the power because Holy Spirit is in us. We have power and boldness and courage to witness for the Lord. And in Corinthians, God also tells us that Holy Spirit gives us insight into God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it, it's a part of God that is in us yes. at all times. Yes. It's, it's God himself in us. And then in John, he tells us that he guides us in all truth. So Holy Spirit gives us power, boldness, courage, insight, truth. He is our inner witness right. of Jesus himself. Yeah, and amen. I mean, when we look at um, the Holy Ghost and what he does, it reveals things that, you know, man might not see. Yes. And when we need that revelation from God personally, you know, you can, you know, once you feel the Holy Ghost, you don't have to have three or four or five or six different people there mm -hmm. to for God to reveal something to right, you. The right, Holy right. Ghost will reveal it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's it's very it's personal it's a personal touch or a personal you know you know feeling god there with you mm -hmm. you know like we talked about like you have mentioned uh there in acts you read further down in acts you know it comes in and it's like a rush of mighty wind you know it it set their tongues you know of their speaking and you know it happens suddenly you know and it comes like that so you know the holy ghost is something that you know you should if you don't have it, you should strive to get it. Yeah. Um, anybody else want to jump in on that? Yeah, I mean, question? well, prior prior to, uh, you know, the New Testament church, right? I mean, the Holy Spirit was present, right, but not in the same way. Uh, the Holy Spirit was present in creation, right? He, he yes. hovered above, right, mm -hmm. the, the, the water and, and uh, the face of the deep, right? Um, he also, you know, dwelled with people but just for a time it was very it was temporary right it gave them power to do this or that but it's very temporary thing after jesus has left right he says you know i need to leave so that i can give this uh you know well i, I guess i looked it up and there's several different versions of it says that one's a helper mm -hmm. comforter yes. Yes. advocate right yes. all of it in in john paraclete. Uh, 14 26 mm -hmm. paraclete right yeah exactly so you know uh in john uh, 16 13 i really like this verse Sorry, I was, I was looking at yours. There's, there's so much in John. Yeah, 16 and uh, 13 here. It says, um, however, when, when, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Right? So, again, you know, before we were saved and before we came into knowledge of Jesus Christ, right, uh, the gospel did not penetrate our being into our spirit as it does when the Holy Spirit is now present in you, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, we have rejected truth. We have turned away from light and, and entered into darkness, right? And what the Holy Spirit does is he illuminates, yes. right, and reveals 
and brings things to the right perspective, right? There are many truths out there, right? And, and we, can, we can take this book and preach it however we want to preach it, right? They preached it and said, slaves, you, you, you should be a slave, right? You know, and, and they've used this book to do crazy, wicked things, but the Holy Spirit is, like you said, Nelly, the Spirit of God. It's the heart of God, you know, manifested it, right? And it's, we can understand the thoughts of God. And so what the Holy Spirit does for us ultimately, right, is he leads us and he guides us into all truth and to all righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right, because Amen. he is one. So I um, I think it's very easy for people to say, uh, to refer um, to the Holy Spirit as it, the Holy Spirit as like a thing. Right, right. And it's a person. It is it is God. Um, and so when he is sent to us, it's like having God always with us, mm -hmm. inside of us. Mm -hmm. Um, having him to comfort us when we need, to help us when we need, to lead us, to reveal things to us. So I, th I think that God sent the Holy Spirit to us as a gift to be everything we need him to be right, right, right. in order to walk this walk with Christ. It, and, you know, going back to what J.D. said, too, I mean, gosh, I mean, I could ask you guys, you guys are pretty smart, been in the faith for a while, pretty seasoned saints, right? I mean, but still... I mean, I don't want to have to depend upon everybody Absolutely. and the news and my friends and Absolutely. Google and all these different websites that sometimes I feel like they contradict each other and this yes. and that, right? It, it's so good to know that I can hear the thoughts of God, right? Because God speaks to me through the Holy Spirit. I, I feel like having the Holy Spirit in us, we live life on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different dimension. And... and it's hard to resist mm -hmm. that because yeah. that is so much better than anything we can do on our own mm -hmm. or in our own thinking. Right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, and I think sometimes, you know, we hear the Holy Trinity, people say that, the Holy Trinity, but usually the Holy Spirit's the one that they usually leave off. You know, we know God the Father, God the Son, and, you know, God the Holy Spirit, but that's usually the one that if you, it's not really... Uh, thought about or, or too dependent on or I want to get that right off the bat you know it's kind of like the back burner but you actually if you don't have the Holy Spirit it's hard to discern things mm -hmm. or or see things that you know without the natural of you know all the miracles and stuff like that that just doesn't happen just because you're a Christian and just because you know you, you know you believe you've got to have that Holy Spirit to give you the power to do that <laughs> thing so uh, moving on my second question is, how does the Holy Ghost change us? So I'm going to use just an example. You know, I'm, my example is Peter. You know, when before, you know, he received the Holy Ghost in Acts, he, you know, walked with Jesus, you know, those three years, all the disciples, really. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, you know, we'll take that the time he denied Christ. He denied him three times. He didn't want to, he avoided it because he didn't want to be arrested, you know, because they arrested Jesus. So all the disciples took off, you know, and, but Peter is the one that they kind of stick out, but he did not, because he, you know, God, Jesus told him, you will deny me, and, you know, his thing, oh, no, I'm not going to do it, but he did, but he was, he was trying to, you know, avoid being arrested, but then we get to Peter in Acts after he received the Holy Ghost, you know, um, he proclaimed Jesus without a thought, you know, he also... Um, you know, they, him and John went to the, we talked about this a few months ago, the, the gate beautiful and they healed that man mm -hmm. and they were arrested. He didn't, you know, he didn't care. Mm -hmm. He was bold enough to even stand up at Acts four uh, and eight. It says then Peter filled with the Holy ghost, you know, it's pointed out. He was filled with the Holy ghost at this point said unto them, you rulers and people and elders of Israel. <coughs> if we this day examine of the good deed done to be an impotent man, by what means is he made whole? So now they're even bold. So, you know, when you, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you change the way you speak, um, how you yes. see things, your yes. personality. It will, you know, it will change that timid person into, a, you know, a roaring lion. And, you know, sometimes we see that it's, you know, Jesus is at first sometimes depicted as a, a lamb, mm -hmm. but then you see him as the, the lion of, of right. Judah. And that's how we should be as Christians when we receive the Holy Ghost you know, be ready to be bold and going out there. So with that second question, how, you know, how does the Holy Ghost change us? I think for me, I can remember, I, I first received the power of the Holy Ghost when I was 11. And it was at a women's conference with Power Praise Fellowship in Deming. And um, had grown up in church. I had been in those all night, you know, um, when, you know, when we had Sunday morning service, 
Sunday evening service, you know, where sometimes you didn't even exit out of praise and worship because the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost was so thick that you couldn't even move on, and it was just people laying out and running around, and, <coughs> you know, from when I was little, it was, it was kind of scary and intimidating, mm -hmm. but when it hit me, when I received it, I felt like I could run a mile, like I could literally do anything, and at 11 years old, a lot of people think, well, what could she even know about the Holy Ghost, or, you mm -hmm. know, how much of the exactly. Bible could she have read, exactly. but it was like, at that moment, I knew that if I had God on my side, I, there yes. was nothing that could stop me. Mm -hmm. And at that age. And so I think for me, the boldness is the biggest change that I saw in myself because I was very timid and shy. And at that point, it was like, well, hey, you know, I, I, ca I, can, I can do anything. And then I think another way that the Holy Ghost changes us is, in addition to giving us that boldness, he intercedes for us. Mm -hmm. And so he knows what we need, even when Better. we can't mm -hmm. like utter the words. Right, right. And I've, I've found myself running back to this scripture over and over during this whole pandemic. Mm -hmm. And like, how could you, you know, to sit and pray for every need that you're even aware of. And then those you're not, you'd be, you'd be on your knees mm -hmm. all day. And so it's Romans 8, 26 to 27. And it says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do, not, we do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he mm -hmm. who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So he, it's like he goes to bat for you. The Holy Spirit, he is that, um, he makes up that hedge. When you're just in your, your um your sorrow or your depression or you don't even know what to pray for mm -hmm. or he will take he he knows how to go to the deepest parts of your heart mm -hmm. and know and f figure out what you need and go to our father in heaven and say look this is this is what that person needs Amen. i think that's one of the th the greatest uh, advantages that we have having the holy spirit knowing him even in this year in 2020 we can walk through this year with hope we don't, we're not going through the same way other people are. There's, there are people that are so terrified, they won't even step outside their door. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not just about using wisdom, but it's about how we're living our life. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we're not terrified people. Right. We know who we are in Christ. The Bible tells us that his spirit has given us eternal life. And by his spirit, we put to death the deeds of the body. Right, and right. so... We don't live on, we don't live normal lives. Mm -hmm. We live above mm -hmm. the hopelessness and the fear because of Holy Spirit living in us. Yes. Well, I think it changes uh, your attitude, like you're saying, your attitude towards mm -hmm. things that, you know, before you were saved, you know, you know they, they would scare you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having the Holy Ghost there to comfort you and to reassure you that that, that doesn't matter. You have God on your side and... Yeah. If you, if you have God in your corner, there's nothing going to get to Amen. you, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, did you want to yeah, add yeah, on that? I, yeah, I do kind of, um, you know, one of the things the Holy Spirit does for us is it, you know, it, it, it does enable us to hear the truth, yes. right? But it also enables us to live out the truth as well, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that we should walk in the Spirit, right? Yes. And deny our flesh, uh, you know, crucify our flesh daily, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things is, you know, it has that regenerating power. The Bible says that we, we, we are a new creature, in Christ, and so to be regenerated is to actually be like your genes, yes. your physical Regened. genes. Yeah, you're you regenerated. Regen yeah, yeah, you're mm -hmm. you're made into something new, yeah. right? Before you were a, a pig falling off in the mud, <laughs> and <laughs> sorry, 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 I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, in, in the mud, right? You're just dirty, nasty, whatever. Yeah, sorry, JD man. Uh -oh. yeah, yeah. And then and then now, because you're now converted, right? You're or we'll say a sheep, right? That's uh, we're, we're in the flock of God now, right? And so that mud doesn't feel good on our wool, right? And mm -hmm. we, you know, it's not very comfortable. So um, the things that we used to do, we don't like to do anymore. Right. And the Holy Spirit gives us that conviction, that conviction. Mm -hmm. right? So that we could walk this straight and narrow. Because before, I mean, there were times, you know, I, I can remember times where I was like, okay, you know what? I went ahead and said sorry to him, but <laughs> I didn't forgive him in my heart. And, and, and the Holy Spirit 
you know, convicted me of these things. There were some things that I had, man, I had made fun of guys back in high school. I mean, just joking around, like, and I had to go back years later and be like, hey, you know what, man? I, I remember I said those things to you, and we were just joking, but I know those, I think some of that stuff, I think it really stuck to you, and I don't, I don't believe those things about you, mm. you know what I mean? And so I was trying to go back yeah. and right some wrongs, right, kind of clean up my mess, mm. and the Holy Spirit, you know, was definitely one to bring these things back to my remembrance. It's not just the word he brings back, but it's also, yes. hey, you got to make some things right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So and it could be just the smallest, <coughs> the sm it's everything. It's the smallest little thing where you're like, in your flesh, you're like, that couldn't have possibly hurt their feelings, but yeah. the Holy Spirit says, you got to make this right. right. There are times, and this is probably why Nick thinks I'm so crazy and bipolar <laughs> and whatever, because there are times when I'll be, you know, maybe a little dramatic or overreactive about something, and I'll say something mean to him, and then I'll go to the room, and then I'm like, immediately, it's like, Holy you were Spirit. wrong. Holy Spirit. You got to yeah. fix it. Yeah. So then I go in there, and I'm like, you know what, I'm sorry. And he's like, you're so crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know what, I'm making it right. You call yeah. me what you want. But <laughs> but yeah, it, it is on and everything. He convicts us. And at the beginning, when you're you know first really getting into living a right um, way through Christ, it's uncomfortable to, uh, mm -hmm. to relive that conviction. And then it's hard. You know, mm -hmm. as the years pass, you're just like, all right. I knew before you convicted me, Holy Spirit, I knew I was wrong, but thank you for the confirmation. <laughs> right, right. I'll fix it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. and what's good, you know, the Holy Ghost, it, it also changed, like we're talking about how it changes the way you think, but it also gives you that knowledge that you might not have had before, mm -hmm. like the, in knowledge in the Word. You know, I've known um, people like where I used to go to church in Arkansas that, you know, um, they didn't finish school or they had a hard time, mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't read. And they received the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and then they could read throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. they got that revelation from God. But, oh. you know, it's like, you, you, you know, and they would say, hey, I, you know, I only grad, I didn't, I quit school at sixth grade or something like that. And you're thinking, what in the world? And, and they're up there preaching, right. and, and the knowledge of God is just flowing through them. Mm -hmm. And, like you know, yeah. it's, just, it's just amazing what the Holy Ghost can do. I mean, it changes us so, it, you know, you see someone you might not have seen and they get saved and receive the Holy Ghost and then you meet them ag again and then it's just like a whole different person, you know, and I'm sure, you know, we've, we've taught about this, you know, a few weeks or uh, last time it was about even uh, Paul, how he changed overnight, exactly. you know, we got to think that m most of those disciples, you know, were probably afraid of Paul there at the beginning because Absolutely. he persecuted them. Mm -hmm. I mean, he would go out and ask, you know, the Pharisees, hey, can I uh, give me some more, uh, you know, write these names down so I can go get these Christians and stuff and you know you know hearing that you know God changed him you know some of those Christians are probably like yeah I don't know about yeah, that you know says it. you know yeah. he, you know I don't know if this guy can change you know but uh that's what the Holy Ghost does you it's know awesome. it, it'll, it'll change you he makes the Holy Ghost makes changes in us that when people look at it they have to say that can't be anything but a God thing that that's how drastic these changes that he right, makes in right. us are. Yeah, it's and the good work. Yeah, it and that's what we're talking about, a game changer. How, you know, how much of a game changer is that, you know? Right. That, you know, the Holy Ghost will just, you know, flip that person's attitude, their whole personality into mm -hmm. something, you know, that will glorify the, the, the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my third question, final question is going to be, do you need the Holy Ghost? And if you don't have it, what can you do to receive the Holy Ghost? I know this is a hard question here, <laughs> but, you know, we have, you know, people watching that might not have the Holy Ghost or, you know, their question is, do I really need the Holy Ghost? And so that's why I'm asking the panel so we can get this out there. Mm -hmm. I want to read a scripture to you out of, um, this is out of Ephesians 1, and it's verse 13. And um, it says, in it, Paul is talking about Jesus, it says, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. By faith, we receive him. He's a gift. I think you mentioned that before. Holy Spirit is a gift that God gives us. And like any gift, what we need to do is accept it, receive it by faith, right, accept it, and take it in. And then walk in it and trust that the spirit of God living in you is leading you. Yeah, he won't force it on you. Mm -mm. Um, I can remember um, 
you know, it goes back to that fear thing. I think people fear what they don't understand. And so mm. what they're seeing, if they're not really searching the scriptures and finding out what is this Holy Spirit thing? What is this? You know, people say Holy Ghost. I'm not I'm not touching no ghost or <laughs> I don't want to see <laughs> no <laughs> ghost. Or, you know, right, right. But unless you can really delve into the scriptures and, and see what the purpose of God setting the Holy Spirit to us is, all you're really seeing is people who have the Holy Spirit just run around the church and they just fall out and they just shake and they convulse and it's scary and with what are they saying? I can't understand it. And and so it it's a gift and he's not going to force it on you. But if you search the scriptures, I promise you'll say to yourself, I want that too. Right, right. I want that power. That power. <coughs> it's exactly go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Well, <laughs> I, was, I was just going to kind of piggyback off Nelly, right? You know, uh, Ephesians 1, uh, 13 and 14 really say a lot. I mean, yes, you do need the Holy Spirit. Why? Verse 14 says it's the guarantee of your inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Right. So, I mean, we need his Holy Spirit for, you know, for for salvation. Right. I mean, um, and so how do we receive it? Well, you know, Peter, Peter preached a message uh, in, uh, in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. Right. He says, repent and be baptized. Right. So up until this point, these people had not been in the faith. So this isn't something where we have to go to seminary school so until we can earn man's credential and say, hey, here's my resume, you know, at the college, right? Okay, now Dean, endow me with the Holy Spirit, right? It's nothing like that. It's, um, it's nothing that, you know, we have to clean up our life or, you know, come to this place spiritually. It's, it's you know, it, it's not earned. It mm -hmm. says it's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. And God is so amazing because <laughs> the way that he gives, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, gosh, he gives freely and he doesn't want to take it back, mm -mm. you know. And so, I mean, you know, bless God for for giving us the Holy Spirit to to, to do what yes. he does. But, yeah, we absolutely we need it. It's essential. Yeah, I, I remember because uh, I grew up in Pentecost all my life. So I remember sometimes when I was young, I used to be that person, man, I'm not going up there. You know, I'm seeing all these people <laughs> laying sure. out. And then, you know, when I invite friends over, you know, I'd be like, I'm making sure that they come on Friday night. Because if they come Saturday, they're going to have to go to church with me. And I don't <laughs> want them to see what kind of church I go to because they'll freak them out. But that's what's, that's what's awesome about the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what denomination you are, you know, right, right. Uh, Church of God, for Assembly, whatever it is. Yep. The Holy Ghost is the same. One body. It, it's, yep. it's, 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 one, it's the same. You know, uh, the Holy Ghost is there to, you know, help you with, con uh, with converting that power of God within you. Mm -hmm. So... You know, and you do that by, you know, pro uh, proclaiming that Jesus is Lord and by using that name with power. You know, um, I know in the Bible there's, a, I, I think the story was like, um, I, I forgot who it was, but there is these uh, men they saw, I, I don't know if it was Peter or Paul or someone casting out demons. Do you remember that story? Oh, the seven sons of the seven Sheba. sons, Sheba. you know, Sheba, yeah. and, and they see that and then they're just, but they're just using uh, right, right. I want to use it for gain. For, you know, yeah. and, but with no power, right, you know, exactly. and, and the Holy Ghost will give you that power to cast out those demons, cast, to, to fight those, you know, adversaries that are coming to you. And, and you know, uh, when you have the Holy Ghost, your home's protected, you know, mm -hmm. uh, your family's protected, y even yourself is protected. Yeah. Things will come and, you know, I if a doctor tells you something, if you, you have the Holy Ghost, you can rebuke that and... Yeah. And the Holy Ghost will, you know, give you the scripture, yeah. what you need to get there. And, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll come through and give you the knowledge that you need and help you out. Because, I mean, I, I've been in church, but without the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't know a lot of this stuff. I mean, it, I thank God that he's, you know, he's, yeah. he's blessed me and, and given me the knowledge that he has. And, you know, it's through uh, having the Holy Ghost and stuff. Amen, so amen. anybody else want to add? Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I just, you know, once again, you know, this game changer, uh, you know, seek out the Holy Ghost. You know, if you yes. you don't you, you you don't know how to get it, pray that you can, you yes. know, mm -hmm. ask, ask for God, you, you know, to, to, to give you this revelation. Um, sometimes you find yourself in this situation. You want to ask him for, you know, knowledge and stuff. Ask him for it. And, yes. and if you have it. Always ask him for a fresh uh, supply of the Holy Ghost because sometimes you can receive it, but then it just, you, if you're not using it like you should be, it can just 
go away. It's and like you lose your sensitivity to be able to hear him. Right, right. Yeah, and it will create a void. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll you'll wonder, well, well, how come I'm not hearing for God? You've got to seek that daily. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, this uh, this part of the service, we're going to uh, take a, the tithes and offering. Um, we're going to, you know, it'll be on the screen. Um, text to give. Um, don't forget to, you know, uh, give to the children's ministry. I know um, we're going into the holiday season, and, you know, they'll do plays and stuff, and they use all those, uh, you know, the money for that to help them. Um, so remember, um, you're giving it to be to bless the ministry. It's not for anybody's gain or profit personally in, this, in the house. Um, don't forget Sundays. We have two services. Um, one is at 930 and 1045. Don't forget you can always join us on, online and Facebook or uh, YouTube. Um, are there any other s announcements? Um, the community outreach is doing the... Um, yeah. yeah, so November November 20th, right, we are um, actually uh, organizing um, like, a, like a drive, I guess, to we're going to bring in coats and blankets and beanies, gloves, any, anything, hygiene products, and we're going to go and bless the Gospel Rescue Mission. We called over there. There's about 30 people who are in need over there. They have very little supply, and so we want to be a blessing in this holiday season. Winter's around the corner, and so, you know, people are in need, and so it's, it's definitely uh, something that you can do to help if you don't know how to help. Please mm -hmm. um, message us in, in the Power Praise, um, uh, the Facebook, or you can get a hold of me, and um, we will definitely, you know, direct you to where you need to go. Yeah, so you, uh, reach out, you know, right there. Uh, help, help your community. Um, it's such a great blessing to help families in need mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, as Christians, we want to profess that, that great gift right. that, that God has given us. A, a uh, blanket during this season could be a game changer for someone exactly. who is out there exactly. freezing cold. I am mm -hmm. cold all the time. Yeah, so. and it, you know, it's like uh, it's starting to get pretty nippy yeah, out there. It I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to go ahead and dismiss with a prayer tonight. So if we go ahead and bow our heads. Um, dear Lord, help us daily to seek your presence in our lives. Let us be filled with your Holy Spirit. Help us spread your love and faithfulness in this world, Jesus, because it needs it right now. Let us strive to desire the things of God and not the desires of this world. When we are tempted to give up, help us keep pushing forward, Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit moves boldly on our lives and on this, this world because it desperately needs you right now, Jesus. And help us and guide us in our walk with you. And Jesus, we thank you for everything you do, and we all say amen. 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 Good night.